Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. This is going to be my week two and probably the final update on the Frostblades Trickster. I got to level 100 and I'm pretty much ready to move on to uh, another another character. Uh, and I have this build pretty much min-maxed for a SSF uh, character. I'm playing in a private league still, so pretty much everything here is has been SSF farmed. Uh, in my last video, I went over this checklist right here that I wanted to get done, which was plus two strikes uh, with accuracy gloves, a cluster jewel, and get the cluster jewel on, and then a chest and shield with suppression, and then a new nice ring, and then keep farming fortresses for yoke. Uh, so let's go over how much of that I was able to get done. I got the chest. I uh, hit a perfect chest in the graveyard. Uh, this chest pretty much can't get any better. The only way I think this chest could be better is if you hit the haunted modifier, reduce damage from grits, which I actually could do uh, because I happen to hit Chaos Res on my Cluster Jewel. So if you have extra Chaos Resist on a Cluster Jewel, then you can give up the Chaos Resist on the chest and get that reduced damage from crits mod, which will be very, very good. Uh, I actually have a lot of extra Chaos Resist right now, actually. So if I was going to continue playing this character, that would be one of my goals. Uh, I double corrupted a Taming, and I hit Rarity and Mana on hit. Uh, and so I decided to just slap it on because I, I, don't, have, I don't need the Resist from the Implicit. Uh, the claw is the same. I wasn't able to make the GG claw. I might still try to craft it. A lot of you guys are asking me to make a claw crafting video. Uh, I might, I might not, I don't know. I really want to move on to a different character, so we'll see. Regular Heat Shiver still. My amulet's the same, uh, but one of my viewers named Tensuki, uh, he suggested that he was using Fury Valve for mapping, and so I decided to try it out. And it's actually quite strong for mapping. The projectiles split instead of uh, pierce. Um, well, actually, they still pierce, but the way projectiles work is they go in an, in an order, and the first thing they do is split. So the, when you hit a target, the Frostblades projectiles will, the next thing that they hit, the first thing that they hit, they will split uh, and hit other things, and that happens twice uh, because it says modifiers to number of projectiles applied to the number of targets they split towards. And since it has plus two or two additional projectiles, that means they split twice. So whenever you hit one thing, you basically are going to hit four things because of you get because you get two splits. Anyway, it's really good for mapping, and it's a good substitute for yoke because it has the same things as yoke. It has attributes and and uh, all resist. So as long as you are able to manage your strength elsewhere, this has intelligence on it, and it has all resist like yoke does. So you should be able to just like freely swap this in and out for yoke for mapping if you wanted to. Um, you don't really need pierce if you use this, I don't think, because the pierce doesn't happen until after the splits. Uh, but I'm, I wouldn't probably change my implicits. I would just probably keep the pierce anyway. Uh, but then you'd want to use yoke for bossing, because yoke is just insane for damage. Uh, but for mapping, this is very good, and I'll showcase that in a little bit. I made the shield with suppression and attack speed, and uh, I actually got rid of the double damage. I had double damage here, uh, but I got rid of it because I needed the lightning res. I actually don't need this anymore, do I? I forget. I was changing, making some changes to test some stuff. Uh, that suffix should probably be double damage now. Uh, looks like I have the res to make it double damage. Uh, but um, And then I, I couldn't hit life on the prefix because when I went for my veiled orb, I hit a prefix instead of the suffix. Uh, so I just decided to keep it and uh, forego the life. If I had hit the suffix, I would have tried to unveil double damage. And then I would have did a life reforge on the harvest bench. And then I would have um, crafted on that that fire and cold damage instead of having the veiled mod there. And then I would have redeemer slammed. And the prefixes would be the same except for I had to have life instead of the melee gems. Uh, so that's a good shield. Uh, perfect chest I hit. I got a new ring here, which is basically solving my intelligence and my resists. Uh, but then I hit my cluster jewel with chaos res. So now I don't need this chaos res here but it's okay it's still a pretty good ring and then I got the plus two strike gloves I hit the accuracy chaos resist attack speed suffixes and the way I did that was um, speed or not speed chaos reforging on the harvest bench so I put the gloves in here and I did reforge chaos until I hit the tier one accuracy and tier one chaos resist and uh, that took it took a lot of harvest juice I've been farming harvest a lot uh, but once I finally hit it, I had an open suffix, and so I did reforge speed. Suffixes cannot be changed. Reforge speed, and I got lucky, and I hit the tier 1 attack speed. Uh, tier 2 or tier 3 attack speed would have still been acceptable. 
and then I just uh, crafted the prefixes separately with uh, Eldritch Eldritch exalts, and I didn't have very many of those, uh, so I just I kept the life and fire damage. Those prefixes could be a lot better, uh, but for an SSF league, they're good enough. My belt is the same. Uh, this abyss jewel is the same. Boots are the same, uh, and flasks are the same, and that's it for the gear. I was able to get on the cluster jewel though, so I'll talk about that. I hit Sadist on this Exalt Slam instead of damage. I was hoping for damage, but Sadist gives you about the same amount of damage that you would get from having 4% damage on each of the small nodes. Because if you have if you have 4% damage on each node, that adds up to 40 damage. Uh, and so Sadist gives you more than that, actually. Um, so this is an acceptable substitute, I believe. Uh, for having the damage on the cluster jewel, you still get the 40, you still get the four attack speed, uh, which is the most important part, and then you get whatever the other suffix is you happen to hit, which I happen to hit chaos resist. Uh, and then since I hit level 100, I added on uh, two cluster jewels. I got this one with ancestral echo, ancestral guidance. This one's just ancestral guidance. Uh, and so then I dropped everything on the tree that I said I was going to drop. I dropped this, and I dropped this. I dropped the uh, additional strike here. I had points all the way up here because I was so high level. Uh, and uh, and there's the tree. Uh, I have a jewel here with speed, life, shock effect, mana on hit. This jewel is uh, accuracy reservation. And I need this because I only have a level 3 enlightened. Um, I actually bricked my Enlightened because I tried to double corrupt it and it went down to level 2. Uh, but I leveled it back up to 3 now. And uh, so I only need one Reservation Jewel here to make my mana feel good. Uh, but uh, at first, when my Enlightened bricked, I had to craft minus mana channeling on my ring to um, to make my mana work. But uh, now that it's back to level 3, I got rid of that. The other Jewel here is just Damage Speed Crit Multi. Uh, not great, but it's acceptable. And my Watcher's Eye is still the same insane one with base crit multi. And that's it for the tree. Enough of that, I guess. Let's do a map showcase. I got a Dunes here uh, with Veritania. And I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, I'll go first without the Fury Valve. And then I'll swap in the Fury Valve and show you guys what that looks like. Then you can decide for yourself if you want to try it out. I highly recommend you do try it out, though. So this is regular. Regular map clear, right? You're piercing everything. Explosions are still good. Clear is still good, right? Even without the Fury Valve, the Frostblades already has excellent clear, which that's why I never tried the Fury Valve. Uh, but, you know, you guys, you guys know what the clear looks like. And then I'll throw on the Fury Valve and I'll uh, show you what that looks like. So now with the Fury Valve, you'll see the projectiles, they bounce around a lot more. They, they go out to the edge of the screen a lot more. You, you're, you clear off the screen like a lot more. And uh, th so your, your clear speed is just better. Better clear speed. So I'll finish the rest of this map with the Fury Valve on. After I kill the boss, I'll go into the POB a little bit. Here's a breach, which will give you a really good look at the uh, the Fury Valve splits. I'll wait till it opens up a lot. Kill the boss first. And I watch watch the uh, Fury Valve clear here. See how that was one click there. You see how the projectiles bounced over here. They bounce they bounce all over the place on the screen with the Fury Valve. One click and you're clearing. Not, you're not only not only are you clearing the whole screen, but you can clear the stuff that's off the screen. So I'm actually a big fan of the Fury Valve. I might start using that more regularly outside of bossing. And then uh, here's Redeemer. I would I would never like swap it back and forth like this, but uh, I'll just do it for the boss showcase. And there's my boss damage. She dies in uh, one second. Damage is excellent. And there you go. So the build is pretty much done. Uh, I'll show you the POB where I'm at. So I have about 30.5 million damage right now with my build. And the build is done, pretty much. I'll show you the what I would do, though. Okay, what I would do if I was in Trade League and I wanted to min-max this build. This is about as max as I can get it in SSF. But if I was in Trade League, here's another POB I made with what I would do to min-max it. Uh, 
you can get up to 130 million I could here like pretty easily actually and I'll just go over what that would what things I would need to do that first a 10 755 lethal pride put that up here that's huge damage uh, forbidden flame opportunistic jewels throw those on the build uh, change the watcher's eye to a flat cold and grace evade one like this that would get me to 95 percent evade and it would give me more damage uh, add in awakened multi-strike I don't have that uh, and then add in a bottled faith uh, which would give me a lot more damage and uh, fix crit uh, corrupt a heat shiver which would let me level the precision up to a little bit higher level which would help with the accuracy and crit capping and then what else did I add on to here uh, fix the prefixes on the gloves a little bit add more damage there in life and then add the yoke of course uh, look how much damage yoke is if I switch from yoke to fury valve 90 million with the fury valve put on the yoke and it goes up to 130 million so yoke is actually an insane damage difference and it's actually more than that because of the shock so this is with 50 shock um, on my other build I was only adding in like 15 shock and so when you, with yokes you're gonna get max 50 shocks which is a lot more damage uh, and then darkness enthroned is the other big thing so add in darkness enthroned with some good damage uh, multi attack speed jewels and um, slightly better ring here uh, without the chaos res because I wouldn't need the chaos I, d I told you I didn't need the chaos res so I added attack speed there instead and then uh, taste of hate also add in taste of hate and that's pretty much it you just add oh and the GG perfect claw if I switch to a pure fizz claw instead of the penetration one I have now that has um, flaring instead of the penetration and that's it that's all the upgrades and I would go from 30 million to 130 million just with that stuff alone and I mean I'm obviously that's some expensive stuff but it's very straightforward upgrade path if you were in trade league you could just buy all this stuff and your damage would quadruple um, yeah so that's it that's the build I don't know what else I really need to say in this video I'm ready to move on though I've had a great time I have some fortress maps I'm gonna run uh, I just hit level 100 today I'm gonna run these later on on stream so come by and say hi see if we can get the yoke to drop if we get the yoke to drop um, I mean that'll be really cool but I really don't know what else I'm gonna do on this character I can't really improve my gear that much more in SSF all those upgrades I just mentioned uh, pretty much require trade league I could farm maven for like a week to try to get multi-strike and I could try to farm cortex to get bottled faith uh, but the opportunistic jewels are like impossible maybe I could get darkness enthroned too uh, but yeah it's just uh, I don't feel like it's necessary uh, for me I'm, I'm ready to move on uh, oh yeah so the atlas tree I'll, I'll show you guys the atlas tree that I used to farm to level 100 uh, first I did the shrine well hold on let me back up the first 40 percent or so of my XP I just did Alk and Go um, I was doing Beyond Beyond Alk and Go uh, with Exarc Altars and not a lot else really I can't remember what else I did my, my brains fried from the last t day and a half of farming nonstop but anyway once I got to about 40 percent I did the um, Shrine Scarab strategy with these scarabs right here the uh, XP per shrine and I shot up from 40% up to 85% in like 12 maps I only had 12 scarabs and so I respect my tree for breach I took I took uh, which breach points I put I took these breach nodes down here the ones that give you more monsters pretty much you only need to take the ones that give you more monsters and more density you don't really have to take the ones that are like more breach stones more splinters more chance for bosses I didn't take any of that stuff because that stuff doesn't really matter um, and then yeah in 12 maps I shot up like f almost 50 percent XP in like an hour so the <laughs> that XP farming strat is crazy but then I, eventually I ran out of the scarabs and because I'm an SSF I couldn't just buy more so then I switched to an abyss strat and uh, I took all this abyss stuff up here and basically all the abyss stuff that uh, makes extra monsters spawn um, and extra abysses and I started farming abyss with these scarabs right here 75 percent increased monsters so this the you can use two of these too so this is a hundred and fifty percent increased abyss monsters here and then th that paired with the abyss node that gives more XP uh, which is this one right here abyss monsters give fifty percent increased XP 
And then up here, these nodes make it so that sometimes you get all magic monsters come out of your abyss. And uh, you just get tons and tons of monsters. And abyss is giga XP. So that I use that to farm the rest of the way to level 100. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I don't know what else to say. I feel like I should just wrap this up. <laughs> so I'm going to start picking a, an Archmage uh, build now, and we'll see how that goes. But I hope you guys are having fun on the build. If you have any more questions about how to min-max it, come by my Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash zishpoe. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you next time.